back to Queen Variety's channel. And so in today's episode, what we are making is Patty a Goosey Soup recipe. And this is a cook with me video. Yes, guys. I know that the festive period has just uh, finished. That is the Christmas and the New Year celebration. Initially, I had planned to make this recipe towards the Christmas season or maybe the New Year. But I tried my best to see if I can get or lay my hands on all the basic ingredients needed for this recipe but unfortunately it was to no avail because here in Denmark it is very very difficult to lay your hands on some of our local Nigerian you know ingredients this recipe is especially for those of you who do not know how to cook a goosey soup so this is a step-by-step -step recipe especially for beginners if you're a new subscriber joining my platform and you have not seen this face before you're very welcome now you have seen my face some of you have been asking me in the comment section below when are you going to shoot your face it's a long time you've seen my face so finally guys here am i <laughs> so without wasting much of your time let's get straight into the recipe but before we go into the recipe don't forget to like and and subscribe to my youtube channel if you have not yet subscribed to my channel like my videos and feel free to share them with anybody you want to share it with thank you so much guys so now let's get started with today's recipe <laughs> once again guys i welcome you back to my channel so on the menu today what we are making like i've already introduced at the beginning is um patty a goosey soup um, recipe what i have here is my cooked stock fish so I just want to introduce you to all the ingredients I have here before we continue. I'm taking my time to parboil this stock fish for 45 good minutes because this is a very stubborn species. And this stock fish is called the curd. So it's very, very stubborn to cook. What we have here is some cooked shaki and some pomo. I've gone ahead to parboil this meat for at least 10 good minutes. If you don't know how to cook your meat, I'll be leaving a link in the description box below on how to cook assorted meat. And right now on your screen, you can see an eye icon that is popping right now. Please click on that video and go see how to cook various assorted meat. In fact, that is a detailed video explaining everything. So here I have some quantity of uh, beef for this um, recipe and the species I'm using is the one that is called um, in Igbo, we call this one um, aquarano. That is, um, I think, is the veins. It comes along with the biscuit bone. So that's the one I'm using. If you're looking at it here, this is not um, fat. This is the aquara. That is the veins of um, the meat. Oh, it's very tasty and delicious. Yes, let me bring you closer so that I can introduce the other ingredients to you as fast as possible. Here I have some fishes. I'm using about three fishes. I have detached the head, and this is a mackerel. So you can use any mackerel of your choice. And here I have my ndole, that is my bitter leaf. That's what I'll be using. I have some tomatoes, some onions, and some bell peppers. And here is my egusi. I'm using the unblended egusi species. So this is um, 400 grams of um, egusi. Here I have minced some pepper, some garlics, and also some onions. Here I have some bell, red bell pepper, which I have also chopped. And here is the palm oil which is going to help bring in beautiful color to this. So these are all the ingredients as you can see them all lined up here systematically. So, so now we are going to start the recipe as fast as possible. Just like any other kind of um, recipe, the very first thing we are going to do for this cooking process is to cook the proteins. So first of all, take care of the beef. Remember I told you we have parboiled other meat, so it's not going to take a long time. Bring it close so that you will see the pot very well. And so what I have here is the blended mixture of um, onions, garlic, ginger, and um, spicy scotch bonnet. I'll slash these ingredients into two and add half portion. The remaining one I'll add later during the cooking process. So next I'll add some chopped bell peppers. This is um, red bell peppers, guys. It's going to infuse some beauty flavor inside the beef. And here I have some no cube. I'm using a pair of um, no cube. Finally, I'll add some salt, and I'm using about a tablespoon of salt. I'm cooking a large quantity of meat, about um, three pounds of meat or, or three kg meat, I think so. So it's big. So I'm using a tablespoon of salt. So just add salt to your own taste. 
I'll turn my heat to the highest right now and begin to stir this pot so that the flavor will just infuse into the pot. To mix everything to combine effectively and if you have been following my recipes which I know you have and if you're a new person coming into this channel you don't know how I normally steam my beef now you're going to learn it guys you're very welcome to my channel and so whenever I'm steaming my beef guys I do not add any drop of water inside my beef or any meat I cook usually I allow all the flavors to be infused practically inside the meat before we begin the cooking process that way the beef will release its own juices and then your meat or your beef or whatever thing you're using goat meat or whatever will become tastier in the recipe remember to feel free to substitute the beef to any meat you prefer for your party recipe guys after mixing everything i'll just cover this pot to cook for 10 good minutes before we go forward while the beef is still on the cooker cooking, what we are going to do right now is to wash um, the egusi um, seeds. I noticed that if you don't wash these egusi seeds, your stomach um, tends to run, maybe because of the chemicals or preservatives they use in preserving it. So I just want to run some quantity of water from my tap at the surface of the egusi just to rinse off any residues of dust or anything of that nature. we go over to the blending process is 10 minutes right now so let us check the beef I don't know if you can see the pot very well but you will notice that the beef has released a reasonable quantity of stock right into the pot I hope you guys can see it because I can't see what I'm going to do right now is to introduce the shaki and the bomo that we steamed them earlier on I'll just pour it inside the pot here so that um, all the flavors that are in the beef will be infused inside the meat once you have poured in everything go ahead and stir the pot very very well so that um, all the flavors will come together inside all the meat we have here the next ingredient we'll be adding right now is some quantity of water to complete the cooking process of all the meats we have inside the pot here and that is also going to help to develop the stock which is going to form the base and taste of your soup recipe so give the pot one final stir and combine everything very well and then cover this pot and cook it for 15 good minutes you can also cook for extra minutes if you think that your meat require extra minutes um, to cook it you know but um, 15 minutes is okay for me because i don't like my meat to be too too soft during the chewing process and remember also we are going to transfer these things to the oven at the same time add them in the soup during the cooking process so 15 good minutes is perfect for this um, cooking time i'll cover the pot right now the heat is still on the very highest and allow this thing to boil extensively this is the stage or the step where we have to just blend the egusi and we are going to blend this egusi to a very thick paste so I'll start scooping some of the egusi into my blender because the quantity of egusi I'm making is um, large in nature that is about 1200 grams of egusi so what I'll be doing now is to blend this egusi in some stages maybe two times or three times blending process I'll pick up one onion here and slice the onion include the onions inside the blender and blend everything very well. we are going to blend this egusi into a very thick paste so please add a very little quantity of water if you're using an already blended um, egusi all you have to do is to mix your egusi with some blended um, onions or chopped onions and then mix it very very well inside a very thick paste as in thick paste like you know gary if you're doing gary you want to swallow a very thick paste I'm going to use another extra onions for the remaining quantity of um, egg. at this point in time guys i want to bring you back to the camera and show you what has been going on as you can see the beef has finished cooking and i have set them out of the heat and placed them in my baking tray for the baking process so what i want to do is to cook these fishes for only five minutes hope you guys can see how gorgeous and beautiful this stock is looking so this is our stock it's looking very amazing and beautiful and guys this kitchen smells super amazing i mean super super amazing so i'll just cover this pot right now and then cook it for five minutes and here guys i'm still doing the blending five minutes later guys and the fishes are properly cooked i'll bring them into the 
baking tray right now because I'll be transferring to the oven. I want the fishes to come out and dried up in the oven a little bit dried up. That's how I want it. Right now, I will transfer it to the oven so that the grilling process will begin. And while the fishes and the beef is grilled in the oven, then we'll continue with the soup preparation. So everything is going down at the same time. So here we have the stock from the cooking process. I will set it aside so that we'll begin the soup preparation. And here is the outcome of the blended egusi. So this is the consistency I was able to get during the blended process. That is why if you are using um, the dry egusi, please mix your egusi so that um, it will be very, very thick. So at least uh, my blender tried a little bit. I have a very thick paste here. Yeah, so this is very perfect. So now we are going to start with the frying process. So here I have the tomatoes and the bell peppers I showed earlier on. So what we are going to do right now is to mince everything with your food processor and then we'll go over to the next step. Now we are going over to the next step and this is the step where we are going to fry the base of the soup which is um, preparing the egusi or the fried egusi because I'll be using the fried method for this um, soup preparation. And here I have um, my palm oil so I'll go ahead and pour in a reasonable quantity of palm oil inside um, this pot. The palm oil quantity depends on um, the quantity of soup that you're making and I'm making a huge quantity of um, soup or will I say a big quantity of soup guys. So guys at this stage the oil is properly heated. I'll add my onions to the pot. In the same vein I will also add the remaining quantity of the blended ingredients I told you we set aside earlier on. Now I'll add it into the pot. So that's a blended mix of um, garlic, ginger and peppers. So I'm going to stir this pot continuously for almost two to three good minutes until these onions cook down very, very well. Two to three minutes later, guys, and everything is completely translucent. So we are going over to the next step. For the next step, what I'm going to add now is my dry fish. I usually don't eat um, crayfish. If you're using crayfish this is the point in time you have to add your crayfish and so I have crushed the dry fish into little um, sizes some little particles I'll go ahead and just pour it inside the pot so we are going to stir fry the dry fish in this oil for exactly two minutes this process is very very important you have to take your time and stir fry everything inside this hot oil so that all your flavors will be perfectly infused inside your soup during the time you will be eating it so now i'm going to break in my stock cube i'm using two sets of them um, stock cube because the soup i'm making is very big in quantity And lest I forget guys, we are cooking on medium heat. So please make sure you cook this stage of um, the preparation process on your medium settings. Once again, two minutes later guys, we are going over to the next step. Because as you can see, all the flavors are perfectly, perfectly infused inside this pot. So at this stage, we are going to layer the next um, ingredient, and that is the tomatoes and the bell peppers. I have blended them in a rough um, or coarse form. So right now, I will pour it inside this pot. The tomatoes and the bell peppers is optional. If you want to use it, fine for you. If you don't want to use it, then choose any one of them and then um, use. It's just going to introduce a very nice flavor and aroma to your soup. Go ahead and combine everything perfectly. We are going to cover this pot for 15 good minutes or 10 to 15 minutes for this thing to fry properly inside the pot. The appearance of the pot is looking super amazing. Let me bring you closer so that you see everything very well. Yes, so now we'll be covering the pot for 10 to 15 good minutes. But please make sure you're stirring this pot um, very, very well within the 10 to 15 minutes cooking process because I'll be stirring mine outside the camera. So can you guys see what we have here? The appearance of the stew is looking dark in nature. So this is what you should be having after 10 to 15 minutes later. 
So the bell peppers and everything we added here earlier on is completely infused inside the pot. That means the base of our egusi soup is perfectly, perfectly ready. So now we are going to now introduce the egusi inside the pot. So I'll scoop in the egusi bit by bit like this inside the pot. Guys, as you can see, I changed my pot because the pot I was using before is not a non-stick pot and so the egusi was sticking beneath um, the pot. So I had to change it to this um, non-stick pot. So I want to use this um, non-stick pot I'm having here to fry the egusi very well for 20 minutes before we now go over to cooking the soup. So this stage of preparation is extremely very very important for your egusi because um, if you don't fry it very well, your stomach is going to be doing gru -du -dum, gru -du -dum, gru -du -dum. So you have to take your time and fry this um, egusi properly. So by frying this egusi, we are infusing in all the flavors that uh, we created earlier on inside the egusi. Guys, instead of the 15 to 20 minutes um, process, I told you I was going to fry this egusi. I have taken about um, 35 minutes to 40 minutes to fry it because of um, the quantity of the egusi I am cooking like I told you earlier so on. just in case you're cooking the same quantity of egusi I'm doing so do this for 40 minutes because that is what I did to achieve this dry egusi you're seeing here so this is what you should be having by the time you finish um, toasting or frying this egusi let me zoom it very well so that you can see how that egusi is looking like and please don't be deceived by these blackish things you're seeing they are not bent these are the dry fishes that we added just in case you're seeing some darkish um, particles at the surface of the soup those are the ingredients we added earlier on so right now you can see what we have here the egusi is completely bouncing as in this egusi is bouncing like a football. You can see how it's looking. When you eat this soup, it's going to come out super, super amazing. And my kitchen smells so, so nice. Can you guys see the appearance of this egusi? Yes. I will set this pot right now from heat and then bring in the pot that we use to combine Yeah, I'm going to pour the stock that came out of the cooking process earlier on. I want to make sure I have all my stock right here before we continue and so I've poured in the stock next I will go ahead and pour in my stock fish with, together with the stock inside the pot but before I cover the pot I just remembered my blender so I'm just rinsing my blender from um, the egusi we blended earlier on so I just want to pour in the liquid that we have inside um, the blender now I will cover the pot few minutes later guys and my pot is boiling super super well as you can see this pot i'm using is a cast iron so it cooks and um, things very very fast so what i'm going to do now is to introduce my egusi to this um, pot So this is what we have right now. You can see that the egusi is um, thick. The soup is thick. You don't want the outcome of your soup to come out and uh, watery. Here I'm going to add my shake. Then I'll also go ahead and add some of the cooked um, beef inside the pot. Ready? Remember we've taken time to cook the egusi. So we're just going to add everything and allow everything to boil together. Just add some of the pomo inside it. I am not using all the quantity of um, proteins I cooked earlier on because of the size of pots I'm using. But if you're using um, a very big pot, then you can go ahead and use everything for a party recipe. So this is the stage where we have to taste the soup and see how it is tasting before we now add salt. Hmm. 
Say super amazing. I'm going to add some salt because by the time we add the olubu, that is the bitter leaf, the texture or the flavor is going to you know drop. So I'll drop in some salt. So go ahead and mix everything to combine very well. As you can see, the soup is thick. This is how I want it to be. For your party egusi soup, you don't want your soup to be running. Because remember, you're going to serve this soup to guests. So you want the soup to come out, you know, ekutum, ekuru your time, you have to have like that, you know. Yes, so you don't need water in it. We are going to taste it one last time. Mm-hmm. Adoto. Mm. It's very sweet now. Like I told you, the pot I'm using cooks faster. So we'll cover this for only 10 minutes before we introduce the bitter leaf. 10 minutes later, guys, and as you can see, our oil has boiled at the surface of the soup. And guys, the aroma in this kitchen, eh? Oh, Jehovah. The aroma in this kitchen is something else. I mean, it's something else. So now we are going to stir one last time and then introduce the vegetables. So before we do that, let me just taste the soup to see if everything is still the way it was. Mm. Oh my god. Ofadoto. So once you see your oil at the surface of your egusi, then know that everything is um, ready. And guys, um, please make sure you use a very big pot to cook this soup so mmm Jehovah mmm this type of soup you don't sit on the dining table to eat it nala on the floor finally finally we are going to introduce um, the olubu that is um, the bitter leaf and what I'm using is um, ndole this one is slightly bitter not too too bitter so you need that uh, background bitterness to infuse inside this a goosey soup after eating this soup eh, water it down with a cup of cold chilled water from the fridge in fact forget all your problems <laughs> we are going to simmer this pot now for extra five minutes yes guys So do you see how thick this soup is? This is how you want the outcome of your party egusi soup to be. You know, when you take it like this, pokom, like that. You know, you take it like this, pokom. It just falls in your plate like that. Right now, I've turned my heat to the very lowest. We are going to simmer the pot for five minutes so that the olubu will infuse its flavor inside the egusi. Oh, Jehovah. Cover the pot for extra five minutes like I told you earlier on and simmer it. Five minutes later guys and we have finally finally come to the end of today's recipe as you can see the appearance have entirely changed and our liquid is looking a little bit um, darkish in nature that means the olubu has infused its flavor inside the soup so I'll go ahead and give the soup one final step. And guys this is what we have here so you see our party egusi is looking super amazing can you see the outcome of the soup yes guys and this soup is super super flavorful and the outcome of this soup oh my god guys i wish you can just taste through your camera mm. Mm. the flavors in the egusi penetrated very very well i mean everything is balanced you can and the aroma in this kitchen eh, is super golden thank you so much for joining me today's episode i really hope you have enjoyed today's video feel free to share this video with your friends loved ones or family members don't forget to subscribe guys subscribe subscribe share this video guys and like it also thank you so much guys until i come your way next time Bye bye. I'm so sorry, guys. I forgot my fishes in the oven because um, I left it in the oven to dry for some time before adding it into the soup. You know, usually sometimes when I put something in the oven, it's a normal thing for me. You know, I usually forget my stuff in the oven. <laughs> in case you want to add your fishes in your soup, don't be like me, guys. Just um, add it along the time you are adding them. Um, 
the meat, the shaki and everything and the bomo, but it's unfortunate. Okay? So please um, pardon me for the mistake, it's normal. So I'll end up using it to do something else, maybe moi moi or something later. See how beautiful this fish is turned out. Unfortunately, I forgot it. Oh my god. So please, I apologize for this uh, mistake. 